Hey YouTube family and GN subs, Umberto, I'm back. I was on a brief vacation, that's why you didn't catch me last week. I missed you guys, got a lot of good stuff going on. But first I wanna thank you guys, four million views we've reached, 50,000 subscribers, it's all because of you guys. Thanks so much, I really, really appreciate you. And uh, I'm gonna continue to bring you good news and great content, break it down, make it easy to understand. Make sure you go to the new playlist, okay? I've organized a lot of content that is really cool. You can learn a lot. You can learn step by step how to make the application. You can also, you know, learn exactly what a mock interview is, citizenship, you know, marriage interviews. We have mock interviews in there, etc. It's broken down nice and neat, lovely, and uh, it's great. Hey, let me know if you want me to do a live chat as well. Okay, I've been thinking about doing that. Send me a comment. Say, hey, Umberto, let's do the live chat. Really appreciate you guys. Hey, coming live from LA. Here we go. We got a lot to unpack. All right, so there's a new house bill, 6003. Check this one out. This is a little different, right? It's aimed at employment-based visas. It's aimed at family visas. And what it does basically is you can pay a fee to speed up your priority date, right? So the way that it's proposed, and I think it's gonna have some traction. I know we've been talking about all of these different types of amnesties, but again, this is for legal immigration. There's a few provisions in there also, you know, for the DACA, et cetera. But the main point is, so if you have an employment-based petition and your priority date is two years in, so minimum of two years. So you have to have a case that's approved with a priority date, you've been waiting for two years. What you can do is you can pay a fee. The fee proposed is $5,000. And you can file your adjustment of status right away without waiting until the priority date becomes current. Usually, especially for India, sometimes China, et cetera, depending on the employment-based category, it could take years, right? So this will allow you to pay to speed it up. That's fantastic. And here's another thing. So for family-based visas, they proposed payment $2,500, right? For EB-5, the payment small, $50,000, so, all right, a lot of money, right, for the EB-5 folks, but they made the investment, they figured they can afford it, and, uh, you know, what they have, the reason they're doing this is there's a lot of unused employment-based visas over the last several years, so what they're gonna do is recapture some of those, get some revenue for immigration, everybody's happy, everyone's happy, so that's great news. Hey, guys, so another bit of good news for those on non-immigrant visas, Ayla has sued immigration because the work permits for spouses of H1s and L1s, they were taking forever, right? So they would file for the extension six months before expiration. They didn't get the work permit. A lot of them lost some really important jobs. They had, you know, high tech jobs. They relied on this work permit. So immigration sued and won. So what's happening is that if you're the spouse and the principal applicant is on an H or an L, for the L1 visa, what's gonna happen is there's an automatic extension. As long as you are in L2 status, automatically you can work in the United States irrespective of receiving the work permit. For H1s, it's automatically extended for six months. So that's really good news. Now, Ayla has filed another lawsuit with 49 plaintiffs for derivative spouses for E2 who also can get work permits and for those on adjustment of status in the United States. So generally, if you're the spouse of an E2 or you are a non-citizen and you filed an adjustment of status, you are eligible for a work permit. Well, a suit, because of the delay, I think the same thing's gonna happen. They're gonna automatically extend these work permits. I'll keep you updated on that, all right? All right, November 8th has come, right? Borders are open, right? So what does it really mean? I, I don't think a lot of people have dug into this. I had a client, you know, who has a really important trip to uh, uh, London. And so I had to dig into the proclamation and I had to see some, some details. So let's break this down, make it really simple for you, okay? All right, so here in the link below are the list of countries that we've reopened the borders to. Schengen area, right? UK, 
all of the European countries, Brazil, India, China. Check out this list, pretty broad, right? So what does it mean specifically? It means you can come to the US as long as you are vaccinated. Pretty much that simple, right? The vaccination has to be on the list that's approved by CDC, so you wanna check that out. We have a link below. You can go to the proclamation, you can check that out. Now, here's what a lot of people don't know. A lot of people don't know there are exceptions. The exceptions, again, I'm gonna list here in the link below because there's several, right? One is if you're coming from a country, you know, where you can't actually get a vaccine that's approved by CDC, it's not available. If you have a humanitarian or emergency reason, this is like the NIE exception. So, um, you know, we've done some videos on those. You can check that out. My client, you know, is trying to have, you know, a baby. And so she didn't want to get the vaccine and uh, had a really important meeting abroad. So, you know, we try to get the exemption under the uh, emergency uh, entry. We think it's going to work. All right, real quick on uh, my favorite subject, you know, the kids at the border, you know, it's dear to my heart. I feel for these guys, you know, the parents that were separated from their kids, they are still feeling the negative effects of this. And so, you know, there is a proposal to compensate them for the damage, for being away from their three-year-old for two, three years. Devastating, right? And uh, the compensation amount I hear may be up to $450,000, you know, per family. And uh, I think it was horrible what happened. Why not compensate them, right, for their loss? They were victims, they were harmed, and, you know, compensate them. Another is the DACA kids, Biden administration. Hey, they're making a rule now that should have been made years ago. That's the reason that the federal district court put a hold uh, on DACA. So what they've done is they've made the rule change and they put it in the register, you know, for the 60, 90 day period that's required before it becomes a rule, a law, right? So um, that's pending right now. We're hoping DACA is going to become permanent under the Biden administration. And uh, that's good news. Hey, YouTube family. So good to see you. Welcome back. Click below, like, and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Let's keep moving and I'll keep content coming for you. Take care. Have a great evening.